Welcome to the Dream Mason Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Terranova. A Dream Mason is a person who's brave enough to declare they have a dream and committed enough to do the work to build it. I know we all have a Dream Mason inside of us, and my dream for this podcast is to support us by giving us a glimpse inside the hearts and minds of leaders, creators, and innovators to help us unleash our inner Dream Mason. Because your dreams don't build themselves. What's up, Danielle? How are you? Hi, good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to have you on here. I'm so excited. I'm so and excited. Is, and this is like our inaugural video, real like video. Well, this kind of conversation video. Yes. So let's do it. Yeah, I'm excited. So if we fall down, it's all good because that's what happens when you ride a bike for the first time, right? Right, exactly. It's all right. We'll be fine. I think we're great. We got this. <laughs> so I want to I want to introduce you, and I want to share is perfect for the introduction. So this morning I'm in San Diego, and I go into a core power. I do like a early morning yoga class, and I walk out, and there is literally Cuccio. I don't know what they were like wipes or yeah. And I was like, wow, that's weird. You're just like everywhere. Because yesterday I saw you on like some, you know, I don't know, something on Instagram. But like, I was like, you're everywhere. Yeah, I try to be. That's, that means it's working. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, I noticed it. It's great. That's awesome. And good job for doing yoga. That's what I want. So that's good. <laughs> I, do of, I do do a lot of yoga. Oh, good. That is yeah. great. That is so good. So you are... Um, you're the CEO of Cuccio Somatology. Mm -hmm. You are a celebrity private yoga instructor. Mm -hmm. You are a health blogger for thebeautyblender.com. Right. You're also a partner wife to a man named Tyler. Yes. And you're a dog mom to Toby and Beatrice. Yes. Who else? What else are you? Who else are you? Who? I mean... If that wasn't that's enough. a lot, right? right? <laughs> um, I'm also... So I'm, I'm a, you said I'm a yoga instructor, but I also teach a dance class, which I'm teaching tonight in two hours. It's called Yoga Booty Ballet. And I basically, I teach it only on Mondays and it's like the best way to start the week. Um, I try to get people really inspired for the week with like intention setting. So it's like so much more than just a workout and so much more than just like sweating. Um, we really like do this like meditation to open up the class and get them like excited for the week. So I do that. Um, I like to hike. I like to exercise, obviously. Um, um, yeah, but that, that about sums it up. It's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> nice. Well, I really wanted, you know, look, this is for the Dream Mason podcast. It's yeah. the first time we're videoing. I wanted you on here because we didn't know each other. This is, we, I, I saw you online and I, I was like, this woman is up to cool things. Thanks. She's she's clearly young. She and yet like, seemingly like determined, powerful, motivated. I think the first time I saw you, you had taken over, I don't know if it was like Elephant Journal or Mind Body Greens, like one of their Instagrams. Mm -hmm. Probably Mind Body Green, yeah. What was that? Like how do, how does that stuff work? What is You know how it works? You make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, really, that's it's that's all it is. I mean this a lot of this doesn't fall in your lap and it's not easy. And I just give people so much credit. Like if you're, if you're killing it and you're making things happen, like I just have to give you so much credit because it really is up to you what you do with your life and what you make happen. And, you know, you wake up and you want to, you know, email someone because you saw them on Instagram or, you know what I mean? Like it's just connect, like try, reach out. And what's the worst thing that will happen? You know, you don't, you don't make it happen or you get a no yeah, and then yeah but you get a yes later so <laughs> so it's it's fine it's you know it's it's but that's how i make it happen yeah. it doesn't just kind of show up in my inbox no <laughs> well let's tell the story of how you know you we talked about this before but how did you make it happen because you didn't just like wake up and create something out of nowhere you did this over time mm -hmm. where did this journey you know start with you building you know your own business yeah um, so how many years ago was this? Well, I went to UCLA for college and then I graduated and my parents have always been in the beauty industry. So, um, basically my sister became a doctor and so the other sister 
probably is going to go into business as well. <laughs> um, but even though I did have an interest in business for sure. So um, I graduated from UCLA. I went to beauty school thinking I would go into the beauty industry and create nail products, but that wasn't really my interest. That's what my parents did. And so I went into skincare because that's what I was interested in. And I was thinking, okay, well, I can kind of, you know, do a skincare line for them. And it turns out I worked as an esthetician for about a year. I got really turned off by it. I felt like it was all chemicals, nothing was natural. And I felt like it wasn't working for me. It wasn't jiving. So I basically changed my path a bit. I went and uh, got certified as a yoga instructor. I had like a lot of interest in yoga because I felt like the yoga lifestyle people were, you know, eating right. They were drinking enough water. They were treating their bodies while they're doing yoga. They're exercising and their skin was exactly how I wanted my yoga or my esthetician when I was working as an esthetician, my facial clients to look. That's what I wanted to, them to have that glow. And they weren't really up to listen to me. So my yoga clients, once I became certified, that was a different story. And they were all about listening. And they, you know, I found that when I would go teach, they were radiating, not just like, you know, their skin was looking good because they were practicing yoga and being healthy, um, but they felt good. And they were like happy and calm. And like, that's the biggest gift that I feel like I could give people. Um, so then I was like, okay, I still have this business background. I want to grow and I want to create products. And I have this amazing, um, I'm just so lucky to have my parents' warehouse, which is 40 minutes from my house. And I created my own brand and I listened to my clients and they say, how do I clean my yoga mat? Or how do I, like, what was that lotion that you like massage my shoulders with while I was in half pigeon, you know? And so I listened to them and that's how the brand got started. Sweet. So this is perfect. How do you make the smell come out of the towels that you put over the yoga mat? Oh, okay. <laughs> because that does, those like when you're in a hot yoga class and you have the towel over the mat. Yes. Right. Yeah. And every I've like, I mean, I do a lot of hot yoga. Those you can't get that smell out. Right. How do you get that smell out of? Yeah, those? I'm not. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's really tough. But guess what? I might just make like a detergent or something <laughs> really soon. <laughs> so that might be the next product. Because I will say, a lot of people have been asking me that. So this is this is tuned. a thing. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah. I mean, Look, hot yoga is like the thing that's sweeping right now. Huge. Everybody, yeah. Okay, yeah. hey, so what was the biggest, because even when you describe it, it almost sounds easy. Like, I don't want to downplay you. First of all, you say it with such ease and positivity and you're, that's just kind of who you are. Right. Which is, okay. I have it, why people would actually be attracted to want to be around you, want to follow you. But it's not, it wasn't that easy. You didn't just wake up and go, oh, lucky me, my parents have a factory. Like a lot of people's parents have things and they still don't do anything. No, it's extremely hard. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, that's why I say like, I will give so much credit, especially to people that don't have the advantage of having parents help them or someone help them. Because I even struggle. I even have such a hard time on a, like every single day and if I have a hard time, I can't even imagine someone that's starting from like, or doesn't have any resources, you know, any help. I can, I, I, I mean, I just give them so much credit, but it was a really long journey. It was, I mean, and it's still really hard. I can't say that I'm like, you know, jumping for joy every day and everything is really smooth. It's hard work all the time. I still have like these huge goals that, I mean, it might take, 10 more years for me to get where I want to get, you know, and it's like, but I have to keep celebrating the small wins and I try to just stay positive and it's really, it's not easy. I will say that it's just definitely not easy. I definitely struggle. Like I definitely like fight myself some days where I'm like, Oh my God, this is so hard. Maybe I should have just gotten a, a real job. You know what I mean? And just gotten salary and you know, it's, it's not easy. And so I, I started as a yoga instructor and my clients would cancel and then, oh, there goes, you know, my uh, rent, you know, it's, it, if a client cancels or they move or they, it, it's not, it was not easy. So it's just taking baby steps. That's what it is. Can I ask you, um, you said something just a second ago and yep. it's going to actually, it's going to be like more of a vulnerable, like sensitive area. But I think, do you know who, um, have you ever heard of the brand Flynn Sky? 
like yeah. dresses. Mm -mm. Um, it's it's yeah, you'd probably love it. It's something that you'd probably. But I just inter, I just did, I just did a podcast with Amber Farr, who's the CEO of Flint Sky. Okay. And she's it's a, it's a. Uh oh, did we freeze? You're gonna. It's totally up your alley. Okay. But we. We, we, had, we had this conversation and when we got to what the challenging things were, one of the things we talked about was the internal dialogue uh -huh. that's actually like working against us, yeah. right? Like the voice in your head, if it was positive, you're the luckiest person in the world. Right. Because that internal dialogue for most of us is not. Maybe you're the Buddha or like the Dalai Lama. Right. What's the internal dialogue that like is the thing that you're usually like battling? Oh, it's like, I'm tired. <laughs> To be honest, that's what it is. It's like, I'm tired. Like it's, I, I really feel like the, the success of this brand is really a hundred percent up to me. And that is an overwhelming thought. That's an overwhelming and exhausting thought to think like every day, if I want this business to grow, it's up to me. Like, okay, Danielle, like you want, you want success. All right, let's go. Like, but you have to do, you have to do the work to get there. So that's, that's probably what it is. Does that answer the question? It, it could, yeah. I mean, I, I can't tell you what's in your right. head, right? So I can't right. tell you what, what right. you're- Is that the answer? No, I'm kidding. The, and is, I mean, maybe there's another, look, I'll, I'll, I'll ask another question and we'll see where it goes. But I think we all have like the voice that, because I get the I'm tired. And there's a voice that I think that, um, almost like really slows us down. Like I'm not good enough or I can't do this. Or for a lot of people, it's like I'm fat or I'm ugly or I'm whatever, but it's usually something that is, is really just not true made up, but yeah. that we hear. Right. Sure. I don't know. I think maybe it's that like, I, I don't know. I think I have, um, I think it's more like a fear, maybe. It's more a fear of like not yeah. allow or not having, there's like a weird fear of like not having the energy. Like, cause I'm all about like self care and all about like taking care of myself. And I definitely want to practice what I preach. And I feel so much better when I take care of myself. But here I am also trying to create this empire of a business and. Where does that, you know, finding that balance is super hard. And I feel like I have a fear that like, I'm not going to be able to find that balance or I'm not going to be able to take that time for self-care if I really go for it. You know what I mean? And I think if you really go for it, I mean, I see my parents who worked so hard and it was such an unhealthy balance. And it's like, I don't want that life, you know, like I don't need to have the biggest company in the world. So I'm just trying, I guess, to find that like happy medium where I, could, I don't feel drained every day. I guess I have this fear of like feeling exhausted as well. It's, it's a very strange thing, but it's definitely um, there. Look, it can be as, as somebody who is advocating for everybody's a dream mason. Everybody has the ability to create their own life and create a life that they want. Mm -hmm. I get it. Like, I have this fear, like, what if I'm not doing it? What if I'm not out living this awesome, exciting, totally, you know, designed by me life? Like, if I can't do it, can mm -hmm. I actually... Sorry, my dog's coughing. Sorry. <laughs> He's like, okay. this, like, my pug has this weird cough. Sorry. <laughs> his his well-being is not taken care of. Right? No, it's not. He's very stressed out. <laughs> no, sorry. sorry. So how do you... Since we, we just went to well-being, like one of the biggest things I do with my clients is mm -hmm. try to set them up. I think of, I guess, try to set them up, that foundation up. Because mm -hmm. anybody who's up to anything big, it is, it, it's, it pulls at you. You mm -hmm. know, whether it's your soul, your heart. Um, I always think of it as like a building. Like if we were building a building, we're the ground floor, right? If we're not actually taking care of, taking care of our, our business, our husbands, our wives, our kids, which are all on top of us are just going to, mm -hmm. you know, crumble down. Right. How do you actually, you don't have kids yet, but you have, you have, uh, and I said yet, assuming that you wanted them. Yes. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. But you have, you, you're a dog mom. So you have two dogs. Mm -hmm. You have a husband who also mm -hmm. works. He's not just hanging out waiting to take care of you. Mm -hmm. um, how do you support your well being as the thing that you're afraid of? Um, so I've actually made it a point on weekends to not work. 
I worked yesterday, but, (laughs) but I really make it a point to try not to work on the weekends. And that's something that really helps me. Um, so taking like two days off, um, I try to really like turn off at the end of the day, which is really hard being when you work for yourself, you could literally go until you get into bed and close your eyes. Um, so I really make, made a point to do that. Um, and just really trying to separate yourself, you know, the stress of the day could really carry over. Um, and I know for my own health, like, you know, I just need to take care of myself. Honestly, it's great that you brought up the kids thing. We're actually starting to try soon. And I know that like, I won't be able to have a baby at all if my health is not in tip top shape. And that's not that stress is like the worst thing in the world for you. And I know that. So it's almost like my body is like, I'm like, my mind is telling my body, like, cool it. Like if I go too far, it's like, nope. Like you just like, you're not going to be able to have a child. You're not going to be able to live this like life that, you know, a happy life. So that's really, it's, it's been really interesting for me for the past like month, I feel like. So it's been a change. And I think, it might change for everyone at certain points in their life. Um, I don't have kids yet. And I feel like that's going to change a whole, that's going to be a whole new chapter, but self-care is so important. Going to a yoga class, like that you go to core power. That's great. Like going into, you know, that's an hour where you can just be like, nope, like turn your phone off. And that's just that you time. Um, and, that, and don't you feel amazing after? Like you feel so good. <laughs> at the end of a core power class I don't know if I I don't know how I feel I'm like very like I love I can do yoga almost every day mm-hmm. and it's funny I used to be I was the guy who went to the gym every day and just like threw heavy weights around yeah. and like I went to the gym last night and went to yoga this morning and they're totally different they don't yeah. you know to me yoga is yes it is exercise and I absolutely especially a hot yoga class like my body it gets it, you know, it's basically, but it's, it's, there's a sense of peace and calmness and relaxation that you, you know, that you teach people and you get from yoga that you don't get, that I don't get in the gym. Like in the yeah. gym, it's like, I'm doing this thing and like, yeah, it's good for me, but it's way more about like what it's going to make me look like than, than what it's actually doing for me, at least for me. Right. Like right. Yoga, no. yoga, yoga, I always say is like a bubble bath for my soul. Exactly. That I should use that. No, <laughs> I actually make a bath sure. product, so that would be perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> bubble bath for your soul. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it is exactly that. And that's what I fell in love with yoga. That's why I fell in love with yoga. It's so much more than getting like a workout and just going to the gym and you're in and out. It's really that time, as I said, to like shut off and just like, you know, be with yourself and I swear sometimes I'll be like on my mat and I get like some something pops into my head that I totally forgot about. And I was like, oh my gosh, like how did that slip my mind? And it's, I mean, it makes complete sense. We are running around every single day doing a hundred things. You know, some of us, some people have kids, they have their kids activities. Like it's a lot. So it makes sense that we forget things. And that's why we need yoga. <laughs> no, and, and I think... I, it's funny you say like that thing pops into your head. I always about 75% of the way through any yoga class, mm-hmm. I get some creative, I want to call it a download. Like yeah. I really, something hits me that just shows up out of nowhere. Yeah. And it's like the thing that I need to be doing or the thing I need to be working on or the person I need to reach out to or the book yeah. title I need to work on, whatever it is, but it, it's, it's like magic, but yeah. I haven't, that connection to somewhere deeper because you're, I'm getting out of all that other stuff. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. You summed it up perfectly. Yep. Nice. Yes. A plus. A plus. A plus. You, you get a yoga. celebrity yoga teacher. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, um, what, what advice would you give to people that here, let's do, let's make this a two parter. Cause I think there's two different kinds of people. Okay. People that are quote unquote too busy. Because mm-hmm. that's, right, that's everyone pretty much. Yeah. Let's do that one first, and I'll ask you the second, the one, the next one after. Okay, say that again one more time. Sorry. Yeah, what advice would you give? I actually didn't ask you the question. Yes, yeah, okay. I was like, um, <laughs> what advice would you give the person that's, like, too busy to either take care of themselves, whether it be through yoga or some other form, but what would you give them to support them? 
Well, I always say that the person that is too busy needs double the amount of time or yoga or meditation. So it's like, it's true. It's like, if you're too busy, then you need even more of it. Um, my advice would be start, start with something really basic. Like let's not dive in and say, okay, I'm, I need to do yoga and I need to do meditation. So I'm going to do this five days a week. Like, no, like let's start small. Let's start with something that's realistic with your schedule. And let's start with maybe 30 minutes of yoga. Or can you just like close your bed bedroom door and go on YouTube and pull up a, a yoga video and do yoga for 20 minutes? Or even if you don't want to move, you want to meditate? Great. Like just do something. Or hey, maybe it's taking a bath when you get home at night. Like these are such simple things, but I think each of these activities really allow you to be with yourself. And as you said, you're like unwinding, you're letting go of everything else. Um, you know, so that way you can kind of, that magic happens. That's when it happens is when you kind of get that time and it, it can literally be five minutes. Like I really think like, and five minutes is going to feel maybe long to you, but that might make the world of a difference. So those are just some yeah. basic tips. I started a practice recently because I, I meditate, I do yoga, but there, it's always, it's always a doing, right? Like even meditation, I'm doing something. Right. Yoga is a doing. And I noticed that I, I, my days were all filled with doing, right? And we're not human doings, we're human beings, but we leave so little time for just being. Yeah. That I cultivated a practice and it's new. I'm not, I'm not winning at it yet. No. Uh, but it's in the morning and the night where I just sit and do nothing. Yeah. I practice to cultivate boredom. Yes. Which is the craziest. It's literally just like stare at a wall or at a tree or whatever. And just to be, don't worry about your breathing, like just sit. That's amazing. It's really hard. That's so great though. <laughs> no, because I, I, I think yeah. a lot of people struggle with that, with like, we have social media, we have um, emailing, we constantly can be activating our brains. And I think that even on the weekend, sometimes if I don't have things going on, it's hard for me to just sit still. Or it's like, it's, you know, even if you're just watching TV, half the time people are on their phones now, you know what I mean? While you're watching TV, it's like not enough. So that's a really great yeah. practice. Just, yeah. Oh, we're like hyper distracted. Yeah. I mean, like we can't even, I notice like I can't watch movies anymore. Like TV shows are faster. Yeah. But if like, if, if I go to the movies, I'm like bored. It's right. like not. And then I'm uncomfortable. It's like, Right. Which is weird. We should be able to just be able to just be. Right. No, it's so crazy. I struggled with that a lot. I feel like I'm getting better at it. But, you know, even on the weekends, I just feel like, why am I anxious? And it's because I don't have enough, like, you know, getting or like things to do. And like, it's just, it's not good. It's not healthy at all. So that's cool. That's awesome. What do men who... I don't like yoga, yoga's for women, um, whatever men say. I know that somebody, I talked to a friend the other day who, um, he's somebody who I'm gonna have on the podcast, but he's a yoga teacher, he does sound baths, but he made a comment to me which just so resonated, which was about how like in the West, yoga became feminized. Mm -hmm. Whereas like when you think about yoga in India or somewhere, it's not feminized at all. Right. But in the West, it's totally feminized. It is, yeah. So yeah. how would you, what would you give to like a guy like me that you meet on the street who is in my head, I go to the gym, I'm uncomfortable, whatever. And I'm like, I can't do yoga. I'm not flexible. I'm not whatever. Right. You know, and I, I actually teach a lot of men. I will say that I teach like a lot of men and, um, you know, it is sometimes harder for men. I will say that because you guys are taller, you know, a lot of times girls maybe grew up dancing or cheerleading and we're like flexible and, you know, so I understand it. Um, but I will say that you just have to start somewhere. And, and I'm not saying that they, you guys have to love it. I'm not saying, you know, I usually, this is my rule of thumb, honestly, with men and women is give it like three classes, like three classes before you're like, no, this is not for me because I hated yoga when I started it. I actually, it was the same thing that we were kind of just talking about. I was completely bored. It was painful. Like it was like holding a pose for five minutes. I could not do this. So, and then I started doing yoga to like music and that was a whole different, it was a game changer. But 
maybe like what I would say to a guy was like, so like, what do you like about the gym? Are you listening to your own music? Are you like, what are you doing at the gym? Okay. So like, maybe we can incorporate music into it. Maybe we can make it a, maybe a little bit more power flow yoga. So it's not like this, like crazy drastic change for you. Um, and to give it that like three times, you know, of a class and then go to a class three times and then come back to me and tell me if you like yoga or not, because it's always going to be hard and it's always going to be new that first time. Um, but I have a pretty high success rate with getting guys to come back. So I think it's like, I, I actually teach at um, a corporate office here um, on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles. And, and like, I have to say it's, I think 80% of my class is guys. It's like, and that's usually not the case, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is an interesting thing. I will say that yoga definitely, for some reason, you think it's more like a feminine thing here. It is, it is, but it's the meat, it's the sales component of it. It's, yeah. you know, it's when you think of yoga, you think Lululemon you and yes, all these brands have male, you know, sides to them. Right. But we don't think like guys, when guys are thinking about going to buy like athletic wear they're thinking like nike adidas reebok with their under armor they're definitely not most your average guy is not like oh i'm gonna go to lululemon right and buy right. Some shorts. right exactly right right it's interesting yeah well it's look it's great it was it's great in the sense of how it was marketed in the west in the sense of it really like went after half the population pretty hardcore yeah and i think yeah. in, and that worked and it worked and that but now the the dark side of that is men are like, oh, that's for women. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. Or yeah, and if they go to a class, I think they're scared it's gonna be mostly women. And I'm sure when you well, go to Core Power sometimes, it's a lot of women. Well, I think so there's there's two sides to this too. So that's a good and a bad, right? Like mm -hmm. I go to Core Power and there's 30 women in spandex in a class with me. Right, right, right. It's, one, it's a wonderful problem to have. Exactly. You know? Now, there's a couple dark sides of like, look, if I was in a relationship, if I'm married, that's not necessarily the, the place I want to be right. as a man. Right, right, right. Um, that's not, interesting. And if I'm not, like I'm single right now and mm -hmm. I, it's, there's this like, wait a minute, you're as a man, I'm like always looking for women who are like smart, athletic, like in shape. Wait, I have a whole room of them, but at the same time, it's not really the place where I didn't come here to and neither did the people. Everyone didn't come there to get like right, big clothes. right. So there's this weird thing of it's almost better if it was all men in the class. Right, 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 right. That's so funny. Well, I think you should go talk to some of those girls. So <laughs> in, in, in the yoga that's class, my advice to you. But <laughs> I'm not. I still. So this is the thing. I'm not a very shy, like. I'm pretty. I'm not that shy. Like mm -hmm. I'm. I, I. I actually have a friend who we always joke like I'm not good at the, the like. Uh, text like the bumbly kind of date right. way better in real human interaction right. um but actually i feel like the sa the space is somewhat sacred like in the sense of i don't want to be that guy who they're like oh that's alex is the guy that like hits on everyone at yoga oh right like, right, that, that's not, right you know right I don't know. I think that you're like giving me, you're like giving me the free hall pass. <laughs> I say, go for it. No, I don't know. I think that, well, my, my conception, I, I just feel like, first of all, I think that everyone is so closed off. So I'm just trying to open that door in a way with people right now. And especially like I have so many single friends or even when I was single, I feel like not enough guys would like be, forward enough, be it at a yoga studio, be it at a, you know what I mean? And I understand like, yeah, I can't, I didn't come to yoga to get hit on, but like, it's a compliment. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you do it in the right way, which I'm sure you would, you know, I, I just think like, I think, I think, a, I think single guys should be more open. I just think that it's, there's nothing wrong with it. And we're just so sh like on our phones, like, so yeah. ha we have that like shield that's protecting us and that's just it's sad so i'm just telling you to go for it because you're just you're just advocating for love basically yeah. just that's like the nicer way to say it's it. a compliment you just want people... no matter what even if the person has, is in a relationship yeah. it's a freaking compliment and you're gonna do it in a nice way and you know 
there are probably so many single girls who are like wishing you would probably go up to them. So oh, thanks. Do it. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is not where I expected this to go, no, but this is no. great. Because there's got there's likely guys that are gonna be like, wait a minute, it's okay. You might have just ruined yoga for like <laughs> oh, now I'm gonna be going to a yoga class and I'll be like, thanks. okay. <laughs> Yeah, all the women that you teach are like, thanks. I saw that that, that podcast you did. Thanks for that. Now I have nowhere now that I can go. That's good. Well, if that's the case, then that means this podcast is very successful. So that's all good. <laughs> Bye. You know, you you said something though that might actually be the thing that like we it might actually be because you know twenty years ago we weren't as distracted all the time. You know, we, we didn't have a thing in our hand that we were like literally carrying around distracting us. Yeah. And now we actually live in a world where we aren't actually together. So what you're kind of pointing to is bringing people together and creating more connection because it yeah. sounds like what you've seen is a disconnect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Disconnect with others, disconnect with ourselves. We, I mean, people are like clueless, I feel like, even with themselves sometimes. So it's like, you know, being yeah. that you do what you do for a living, you know that. It's like, where do I go next? Where do I, like, you know, what do I do next? Um, what do I want? You know, what do I want in life? Or, you know, how am I feeling? Like, you know, people are always like, they run away from emotion. And so there's, there's definitely you know, I, I'm all about connecting. I'm all about, you know, especially with yourself. And that's, that's a, that's a huge one for me, obviously yeah. doing that, what I do. So. What do you, what's next for you? You know, yeah. we just, you just put this in the space. Oh, um, so next for me is I'm going to take over the world. No, I'm going to, <laughs> um, I really do want to take over the wellness world. I do. I, this is my passion and I absolutely love it. And I absolutely love making people feel relaxed and good. And no one should feel stressed because that's not a great place to be. Um, I just filmed videos yesterday. We did 10 videos. We took 10 hours to film 10 videos and we're going to do like an online subscription um, on our page. I mean, on our website, and we're also going to be offering some of those videos on YouTube. And then we are also basically starting a wellness kit with our products that they'll also, so they'll get products, but they'll also get um, these videos. So you'll have an option basically for- Are the videos yoga, I mean, are they yoga classes or are they actually- Everything, it's like yoga. It's basically everything I've learned in the last eight years. It's yoga, it's um, like, yoga before bed. It's um, the basics of yoga, like the history of the sun salutation. It's vision boarding, intention setting. It's like, what else did we do? Um, we did a, like the recipe, a smoothie recipe, like how to start your day, getting in all the right nutrients. Um, it's everything. So it's kind of like where to, how to nice. start wellness in, in a way. Yeah. Nice. When is that going to be like an available hopefully by the summer latest. So we're working on the kit as well. So we have to edit the videos and then we have to um, get this like actual physical kit made with all the products inside. Are you the, I'm assuming you are because I just see you everywhere, but are you the like, are you the one on the videos? Yes, yes. We film them actually at my house because it's going to be called um, Wellness and Yoga at Home, H-O-M, like OM. And so that's, and so we did it at my house just to be fitting. So it was nice. nice. Yeah, it was great. So, how, did, how did you get, I mean, you're at no point have you ever like, it doesn't sound like you did any training, but you're super comfortable. I mean, you're, you're comfortable in front of the camera. You're, you're, you're well-spoken. How did you get to that spot where you are the face? Not only are you the face of this brand because you created it, mm -hmm. but it just, it just works. It like fits for you. Um, so I actually used to be really shy and I hated talking to people. <laughs> um, I actually started teaching, I started, I danced my whole life and I started going to this, um, dance class. I think it was like my junior year of college and it was called yoga booty ballet. And that's what I teach now. But the owner of the studio was teaching the class and she said to me, you should teach the class. I mean, you should be a teacher. And I was like, no, like, I'm okay. I'm just here to work out and dance and have a good time. And then she said it to me again. And I was like, okay, why not? And so I got trained 
and I went right into teaching. And so sometimes, you know, five people would show up, sometimes 20 people would show up and I would just have to like teach this class and talk. I mean, I'd have to teach a whole hour. And so it was, you know, intention setting, it's, it's dance, it's everyone's looking at you for a full hour. And I think that's just like, what did it for me? I was just like, okay, like if I can do this, who cares if I mess up? Like you can laugh and you know, what's the worst that can happen? And then it, you just have to like force yourself to do it. Like you have to put yourself in those situations and then you're just like, okay, like I, I got this. Also dating was great. I, when I was dating, I feel like it was like mini interviews. Every time I'd go out, it's like, I mean, what's more uncomfortable than dating, right? It can be uncomfortable. So it's like, you know, you're really like feeling like you're being judged and, you know, so I think that, I mean, basically. So. I've like never thought about dating like this. I've never oh, thought you, <laughs> oh, well, and this was also five years ago. So, you know, maybe dating now for me would be a whole different thing. But I just think that I was like so put on the spot and you have to like just you know, they're asking you all these questions and stuff. So I just, I don't know. I think I could just got real comfortable with myself and I had to be, and, and you just have to throw yourself for anyone that's like trying to be comfortable in like large groups or something, just talk to a lot of people, meet a lot of people and just put yourself out there. What about the, I mean, we're, I think it's obvious and we're touching on it, but just the attitude, like, you know, you, the, the attitude you cultivate, you're positive, you're upbeat. You're, there's clearly like mindfulness practices. Where did this come from? Was mm -hmm. it always like this or was this something you developed and worked on? So I used to follow a blog and um, she is, her name is Rachel Ashwell and she is the founder of the idea of shabby chic, which is like you take a piece of furniture, it's like vintage and she like kind of restores it and then resells it. And she has stores all over the country. She actually went bankrupt at one point, restored her business that she's like thriving now again. But she had a blog and on her blog, it was like just painting like the prettiest like picture of her life. Like it would be pictures of her at home or like her furniture. So she was like building a brand through her blog and creating this like story and this feeling and it was just so beautiful and sometimes she'd be in Malibu and it just was like this calming place for me. And I was, I just would always go to it and I was like, wow, that makes me feel really great. And I wanna be able to do that for other people. I feel like I don't like really watching the news to be honest. I like to be in my bubble <laughs> and I mean, I'm, I love it. I just, why not? Like, I just think, it's just, I'm, I'm happier in my bubble and I just think that I can control that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, the, it's the opposite though. I mean, it, it makes sense, right? Like I don't, I, I get news from my phone. I like look at Apple mm -hmm. News and I cultivate what I want to read. Yep. And then I can stop when I'm like, okay, I get what's happening. I don't need to just, because news is built around negativity, right? Like if it right. was actually, if it's drama, negativity and fear. Right. Because that's what pulls us in. So it makes sense that news is a, as a show to, to make money. Right. So it makes sense that you would do this. What yeah. Was the, but how did you cultivate it though? Like what did you get from her that had you kind of make it your own? So I started my blog and then I also, um, is, is this the, the, that was the beauty, the beauty blender. blender? Well, I, okay. I first started a blog called the cute, quaint and cozy. And that was with my ex-boyfriend and we had just moved into a place together and I was like doing furniture. Like I was like, just like showing our new place and like things just trying to make it cute, quaint and cozy, I guess. So, <laughs> and it was like my idea, I guess, of what Rachel Ashwell did for me. And then I started the beauty blender when I got into the beauty like world. Um, but I think what really it was that like when I'm positive, I felt like I remember one friend of mine was like, Oh my gosh, Danielle, you're always just so positive. And that and just like, it's just so great. And I was like, wow. And I was making a point to like be more positive and like listen to people more and like just try to like put that energy out a bit more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when it was like, oh, wow, like you really can control like what kind of happens to you or like what, like the energy that you put out, you'll get back, you know, and you can really, you can really make a life for yourself how you want it to be. Like if you want to live a beautiful, happy life, like, okay, let's do that or you can choose to be miserable. I mean, I, I, I really do think it's a choice and it's, it's, 
something I think maybe I learned and I read so many like self-help books and, you know, I was just kind of very interested. And maybe that was like when I was starting my yoga journey, it was, it was well before that, but I just really had this like yearning to like create a life that felt good to me and that, you know, I wanted to be really, I wanted to be happy. And so I felt like, okay, I'm going to create this for myself. And and I want to be that source of, you know, if I see someone else that's happy and I'm like, oh, that was just made me feel so good. If I can do that for others, then great, you know? Yeah. I was doing a, uh, an exercise today with a friend over the phone. Mm -hmm. And basically this exercise, like the short version is, is to kind of put energy down, like put it down so you can like move forward. So you're not yeah. carrying it around like a dead body over your shoulder, right? Yeah. And I love, I'm sharing this because I love the idea of what you just shared around, it's our choice. I yeah. talk about this all the time. But so I'm in this exercise and at the moment I'm doing it, like walking through these steps with her, I'm like, this isn't working and I'm becoming more angry and more disempowered. And she's like, yeah, I can tell. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. And she was like, you're really committed to like being right where you are right now. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I am. Yeah. Like, I, like, and this had nothing to do with her, right? She's just to help yeah. me facilitate this. Yeah. And it was a perfect example of, look, I'm somebody who knows this. Like I'm a hundred percent, like you create your life. If you show up positive, it's that magically positive things happen. It's you relate to things as positive. You pull positives away. You notice the right. positive. But that even knowing that we have this default that like, I was really committed earlier today to being like in my stuff. Yeah. Negative. And that's, you know, but the, when you can see it, then you can do something about it, right? Right, sure, exactly. And you have to just be able to see it, right, exactly. Yeah. It's hard, it's not easy. And it's like, you know, it's, it, it, there, there are things like, I don't even get like, this is kind of sidetracked, but like, I, I don't get many um, like negative comments on my Instagram being that I'm a very positive person, you know, and, you know, and in the slight chance that I do, I mean, I think someone once got mad at me because it was like, Danielle, there's a lot of bad stuff going on in the world and you're still smiling and happy. And it's like, well, yeah, like, you know, I'm choosing yeah. not to talk about those things because I want to still be the happy place. And I'm not saying like, you know, yes, maybe something really bad in my life is going to happen and I'm going to have to talk about it. But right now that's what I'm choosing to do. And that's my choice. Um, but when those things do happen, they really do get to me. And last week something happened as well. And I was like, you know what? Just going to move on. And the second you were just like, you put it away, you could read it again. You could, you know, look into this person a little bit more, but just like you said, it was like, it's the drama. <laughs> It's the yeah. drama and, you know, you have to make a choice to just stop it. And then it's like, okay, back to my happy life. <laughs> well, it's a, and I love, like, it's a really good distraction. Even yeah. what you're, that friend pointed out, and that friend wasn't wrong. It's not like you're right or I'm right or they're wrong. Right, right. But the thing is, all that stuff is a distraction from whatever it is that we want in our lives, right? If right. you decide I'm going to be sad because the world is screwed up, the world actually isn't going to get any better because you're being sad about it. Right, 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 right. And, and so now you're sad, the world screwed up and you're not working on whatever it is that you want. And I have, and like, look, you're, what you're doing when your business isn't, and, and maybe there's a side of it that you can share where like you do help people. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but I have it that you're actually making people happier, mm -hmm. whether it be on social media or through yoga or through the beauty blender, people like actually do these things and they're not feeling good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And like, look, I didn't, I, I don't, I've never done your yoga class. I've, I'm not a beauty blender. <laughs> like that's not what I'm going to be reading. Right. But when I found your Instagram yeah. and I saw you and I was like, man, this girl's just super positive. Like this right. is energy I want running through my day. Right. Because it's just another pick me up for me when right. I can't do it myself. Right. And yeah, and that's amazing. I don't know what the exercise that I recently did some exercise. It was probably something I heard on a podcast. I'm not sure where it was, but it was basically like finding your strengths. And I think that my strength is um, inspiring others and, and being that positive source. And I think that's really what I'm like, it's like what I'm here to do. Like, and I, I'm happy to do it. It makes me happy too, because at the same time, it's inspiring me. It's like, I'm inspiring myself. But, or if I hear something somewhere, or if, or if I have like a spark of something, it's like, yeah, let's go do this, Danielle. It's like the moment that kind of sparks in me, that's when I'm like doing an Instagram post. Cause it's like, I'm on it, let's go. And then so I can like 
have it rub off on other people. How do you balance that? Because your business, your personal life, it's all interwoven now with social media, right? It's not like, hey, I'm making a commercial that's going to air while I'm living my life. You just said, like, I have an idea. I now go to Instagram or wherever, right? And we're all doing this. Anyone that has basically a modern day business. Mm -hmm. How do you balance so you're not sitting at dinner with your husband typing an Instagram post? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's tough. It's really, it's, I will say, like, I think when I get home, like, I really want to shut off. And it's like, it is, it, it has been a big difference for me to just like not do that at night. Like I really, and I know it's hard, especially when it's your business. And like, I listen to, do you know who like Gary Vaynerchuk is? And like, there's like all these, yeah, he's like course, yeah. business. So like, he's like, well, this phone thing is huge. Like if you have a business, like you should always be on this. Like that's just what you should be doing. And it's, yeah. and I, I can't disagree with it because it, it is really, how I've grown a lot. Like I have grown a lot through meeting people through Instagram. Like we met on there. Like there are a lot of connections to be made on there. I mean, it is, I almost say if you're going to do anything, you should just do Instagram. Like I, I do think mm -hmm. that. So it's definitely hard for me to find that balance. Um, maybe just today and this week, I'm just winning at it. And you know, <laughs> if you were to talk to me next week, I might say something different. Um, but, you know, and I definitely have my moments and, or I get a phone call and it's like, it's 11 o'clock. And that's because I, I do some business on China at time and they're calling me from China and I'm like literally getting in bed and I'm like, Tyler, Paul's calling me. I have to go take this. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And it's like, but we were just watching, you know, a TV show, you know, so it, it's hard. Um, but you just have to make the time for your significant other. You have to stop at one point and it, I mean I don't have the answer unfortunately but it's you just have to try you have to try to shut off and and um I do not I try not to Instagram while I'm having dinner no <laughs> that's, that's, that's that wouldn't be nice so I don't I don't really do that um unless we're talking about something and I was like oh there was this cool video look at this check this out um I'd rather like after dinner I'll like go upstairs and be like, you know, I'll Instagram story, like, oh, I'm going to take a bath and, you know, kind of implement it that way. But not a dinner. Don't do that. <laughs> the, 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 I love it. The bath is okay, but not a dinner. Yeah. It's, well, it's more <laughs> like, more like don't ruin your relationships with people. And, <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, and so the bath is, Sometimes the bath does get ruined by Instagram because I was like on my phone and then I get in the bath and it's already 930 and then I'm like, oh, yeah. crap. How do, you, how do you balance or let me, instead of not just how do you balance, but like what advice would you give to people? You're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Your husband's an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. How do you guys, so like entrepreneurial business like is not a, I mean, nothing is actually stable. We never know what's going to happen anywhere in life. There's an illusion that a, a nine to five is stable. But as an entrepreneur, it is. Like, you're always kind of going. It's all on you. It's all on him. You're, as a couple, trying to support each other. Mm -hmm. What's like the, the best thing that you guys do for each other? And what's the hardest thing you guys kind of have to deal with? I think that sometimes I have an idea of what, he should be doing or he has an idea of what I should be doing. Nice. Yeah. I think it's like, because he, it's funny, he helps me with my marketing. And so he's, he is in my business in a sense. And it's like, sometimes he'll be like, and he, and he tries to say it maybe without hurting my feelings. And then it's like, you know, and I take my business so personally cause it's like me, you know, um, so I think sometimes we have a vision or like, even with him, I'm like, oh, like he told me something today. And I was like, oh, but I thought you wanted to do this. He's like, well, you know, maybe that's changed for him. Like, you know, so just kind of staying on the path of, you know, the vision we have for each other's companies and just kind of trusting that the other person's got it. And, you know, but at the same time, giving advice without, you know, feeling like you're kind of stepping on the other person's feet, you know, so you just have to kind of, it's a fine line, but just knowing that 
when you have a relationship where you both have that energy and that drive, I think it's amazing because I don't know if it would work in a relationship where one person is super like entrepreneurial and then the other person is like, mm, you know, it's kind of hard. You kind of have to be on the same like energy and excitement and, you know, you just have to support each other a lot and, um, and, and just not get, you know, tired of hearing the same things sometimes, you know, it's just, you know, they're, they're, it's hard. It's hard. There are many days where like, I'm sure I've said the same thing to Tyler a hundred times and he's like, Oh my gosh, like just do something already. <laughs> like, but it's, you know, he's one of the only people that I talk to about these things. So it's, it, you have to, you have to play many roles in that kind of relationship, but it's, it's definitely a cool thing though. When you, when, you know, you grow and you watch it grow together, it's awesome but it's stressful. <laughs> What's the, is there anything you're afraid of that you really want to be doing that you're, there's actually a piece of fear like that's holding you back? Um, you know, with, I guess my biggest fear is that, that this won't, this brand won't take off like it should, I guess. Um, my parents are getting older, so I might take over their business. And I don't know if that's something that I really have a passion in. And I see them struggling all the time. And I'm like, oh, like, do I want to get into that? Do I basically, it's like my stress times a hundred, it would become, <laughs> um, it's also, I, I really love real estate. Like I love real estate and, um, I actually look, um, at Los Angeles real estate every single night, like every night, like I'm, I'm a little obsessive. That's something else about me. I'm very obsessive. Like when I'm onto something, I'm like, which is great for business because it allows me to get things done. Like it allows me to, like, I'm a doer. Like I will check mark everything off. Um, but I really love real estate and I, um, I, we've actually, we sold our last home. We made a great amount of money on it. Now we're in a new home and we're thinking about maybe selling this house. So it's, it's definitely fun for me to just look at that. And then I'm like, Oh, well maybe I should have been in real estate or, you know, so sometimes I like do that, but I think that's just normal, but maybe one day, I don't know. So I don't What's know. The, what was the fear around real estate? The there fear, was, well, the fear would be that I, I, I go into real estate and now I'm, I literally have a bajillion things going on. I have the yoga, I have, and I don't know. I don't want, I, I don't want to, um, add on to my plate and I want to focus and I want to make something very successful. <laughs> and then yet yeah, this whole thing is about how you're like literally everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, let's, let's talk about that really quick. So <laughs> people that want to actually know more, they want to, they want to follow you. They want to see you in all the different places. Mm -hmm. Where are all the places that they should go? Yes. All the rocks they should turn over. So definitely follow me on Instagram because I will, make you happy. Um, so then that's at Danielle Cuccio. So it's my first name. So Danielle, D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, last name C-U-C-C-I-O. Um, so that would be the best place. And then we're going to be doing these videos and everything. So my website would be www.cuccio, C-U-C-C-I-O, somatology.com. And that's S-O-M-A-T-O-L-O-G-Y.com. I'll, and I'll then there's the beauty blender. Yeah, you got you got. I'll type it. I'll type it all yeah, out. Thank go you. Ahead, finish, finish what you're saying. I'll put it all in the show notes. But go ahead. Just say perfect. It. And the beauty blender, which is just recipes. I mean, there's the the beauty blender has been around for six years, so we have like so much content on there. It's recipes, workouts, my life, my weekends. Every weekend, I used to do a weekends things post, and it was like following me around town and healthy fun places in Los Angeles and. Just basically, you get to see my entire life. <laughs> All right. I want to, I don't know. I, I don't always do this. This is just yeah. something as we've been talking, I've like wrote random things, written cool. random things down. Love so, it. but like rapid fire, random questions about things. Cool. So you can do yoga one time with any person ever in the history of the world that's ever lived. Who's that person? I want to do yoga with Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> That's who I want. That's, that's pretty extraordinary. If anyone ever went to the top jump. Nice. Yeah. Uh, favorite yoga pose? King dancer's pose. I don't know if I know what king dancer pose is. I can do it. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's like, this, we have video. I do it all the time. 
So it's like this, you can't even see me, but it's like, I do it in all my Instagram posts, but it's like, basically you hold your hand and then you go like that and you right. can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't follow me. Video. All right. Um, favorite song to do yoga to, not just favorite song, but to do yoga to. Um, I'm going to say, um, oh gosh, that's tough because it's like, depends on what mood I'm in. Um, I really love Boney Bear, like just as a total artist, Boney Bear is like just really great music. I actually walked down the aisle to one of his songs and it's just great chill vibes. Favorite yoga studio, favorite place, like the place to practice? Sure. Um, I really like Playlist Yoga in Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. And then what about who's the person that most gets you inspired? Um, I would say, ooh, this is a good one. Cause I don't really know the answer. Um, I would say, I already brought him up, but Gary Vaynerchuk is like really like, he just like gets people like all, oh, you know. It's so funny to hear like a yogi talk about Gary V because he's so like, he's so doing and on all the time. There is no, no. there's no Zen. In, and I'm, I'm a huge Gary V, but there's no Zen about Gary V. I know it's maybe maybe that's why I like it because it's like so different. Well, also my my dad is very much like that. And it's almost like, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I, I think that he just says they're so business. I actually kind of call myself sometimes like I'm a yogi businesswoman. So it's like this, like both these two worlds. So I feel like I'm so in the yoga world so much that it's really fun to like be, you know, in listen to him, like, especially on, it's, I'm usually listening on like a, my ride to work. So it's like getting me ready for my yeah. day. And he All right, me ready. Yeah, no, because you can't not. He'll scare you. <laughs> I mean, like, he, can, he, he will jar you out of your space. Freaking nuts. He's insane. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, okay, last one. You, this is, you, you get long. I mean, this is probably a longer answer. Yeah. So people have dreams, people have goals. And the people I really am, you know, with this podcast and everything I do is all about not the little ones, but like the big audacious ones, mm -hmm. the like huge companies, the crazy relationships, the traveling all over the, whatever it is. What advice would you give those people that are working on that thing or want to be working on that thing? So to either keep going or get started. Yeah. Um, so basically like my advice to, for people that are like going big, right? That's kind of what the question is. Okay. Yeah, um, we're not. Yeah, the, the people that are going small can figure it out. They, we don't, yeah, you know. We don't yeah. care about them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's very Gary Vee right there. <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> that was like, <laughs> I'm channeling it. Yeah. I'm channeling it. Okay. Um, I would say patience, persistence, and keep going. Like, this is. Um, one of my favorite analogies, um, I used it yesterday. Um, there's like a bamboo tree and they say that the bamboo tree, such, this is like a Chinese analogy. And they say, you plant the seeds and first year you water it, nothing happens. Second year, nothing happens. Third year, nothing happens. Fourth year, nothing happens. Fifth year, it shoots up like 90 feet. And so I think everyone, especially today, we're all about instant gratification, about things happening overnight, overnight success, uh, viral YouTube video. You know, we want, if we think something, you know, we want it to happen overnight. Um, obviously we would all want that. You know, who wants to put in work for years and years? But that's not really the reality. And, um, you know, I think if you can have that patience to keep, you know, you plant your seeds, you keep watering it, you take those baby steps, you keep climbing the ladder, and you may not see that success right away. And try to celebrate the small wins as much as you can. Like, you know, it's really hard, you know, not, it's hard to just be like, oh, well, that's not my big goal, you know, but you're taking the steps towards it. So just keep going, have that patience, be persistent. If you get no's, that's all right. Like if you're dating and you have, you know, something doesn't happen with the girl of your dreams or like, you know, you get rejected or you are, you know, business wise, you're selling to someone and you get a no. 
it doesn't mean no forever. Like some of my big customers were no's for a year or two. And so, and then I got it, you know, they're like, okay, I've heard enough of this Danielle. Let me just meet her, you know? So it's just keep going. Like it's, it's not going to happen overnight. And I think if you can get that concept out of your mind that it's going to happen overnight, you're going to take so much stress off of yourself. You're going to feel so much better. And, um, you'll get there. You just have to keep, I mean, it's, it's, sometimes it's, you'll stop. You don't want to stop before you get there. You don't, you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You really don't. And that would no. be a shame to stop. Yeah. <laughs> I always think happy, of, but. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. I, I always think about like, if you were knocking on doors and you don't know if it's the 50th door, the hundredth door, the 101st, the 103rd, and it could be a hundred no's in a row, but yeah. you stop and it was the 101st door that was going to say yes. Yes. And that gate was going to give you the confidence to do another hundred doors. Exactly. It's, and it's, yeah, I mean, we, it's so crazy. Thanks it for that. Great. That was great. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. I think it's, I it, think it can be applied to anything yeah. that people are doing. So I'm, I'm also a sucker because I have keep going tattooed over an ohm on my forearm. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I love it. I love so, it. it like, yeah. Totally there you is. go. Yeah. Um, thanks so much for doing this. Yes. You, I, I want to, you are like, you are, you embody like spirit and radiance and heart and joy and brilliance. Yes. Thank you um, so much. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your, your, your playfulness. Like this was fun. Yeah. Um, it was so your fun. advice, your wisdom. I'm just, I'm very grateful. Thanks it's my for, pleasure. I'm so thank you for having me. It was yeah. great. It was so fun. And thanks for being the first, like, official video. Oh, yeah. I think it worked out great. You guys got to see my yeah. yoga pose. So. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Thanks a lot. And yeah. And um, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll do this again at some point. I would love to. We can see and where we're I got to jump at. into one of your yoga classes. Yeah. I don't know about the dancing one, but maybe. No, you don't have to come to that, but <laughs> you'll have some cute girls in there. <laughs> and I'm allowed to talk to them now, apparently. You are. And I would, right. yeah, I can even You heard it here. Intro. Yeah. You heard it here. <laughs> All right. That's a good way to end this. Thanks, Alex. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dream Mason Podcast. Please subscribe to the Dream Mason Podcast so you don't miss an episode. Share it with a friend and give us a review on iTunes. I am grateful to have had you here. If you want more, you can follow or reach out to me, Alex Terranova, on Instagram at inspirationalalex or at thedreammason.com or email me at alex at thedreammason.com. And remember, you are a dream mason because your dreams don't build themselves. Dreams can't stay